everybody. This is part three of my video blog about guitar distortion. In this blog, I tell you something about the difference between pedal distortion or preamp distortion and real power amp distortion. In part one and part two, we learned the differences between um, different transfer curves of um, hard clipping devices or soft clipping devices and symmetric clipping and asymmetric clipping. And in this blog, I tell you um, the differences between preamp distortion, like in triodes or in effect pedals, and real power amp distortion. Okay. The thing is that a real valve amplifier um, contains a power amplifier that built with pentode valves um, in a usual, usually a class A or class AB configuration. I can show you, it's a push-pull um, configuration and I'll show you how that looks like on the schematic. This is the old Fox AC30 from 1961 um, and you can see um, here the preamp stage, the splitter stage which splits the signal in the 0 and 180 degree to drive the pentode power amp here. We have four pentodes and um, they are push-pull um, amplifier. What is a push-pull amplifier? I don't know if everybody knows that, but we have, uh, let's uh, look in Wikipedia, um, the mechanism is described here. You see the transfer curve of uh, voltage in and voltage out and you see um, there's a little gap here and this um, uh, is the, re the reason for this is that you have a bias, a bias is a, a DC voltage that um, can move the edges more to the inner or to the outer range. Ideally, um, it is in the theory so that um, a push-pull amplifier works perfectly best when this this line here, this curve or line, is a straight line, so that we have no gap between. This is usually um, <clears throat> not every time perfect within every amplifier. Some have, um, especially older amplifier, have um, the situation that they had no extra negative bias voltage um, given to the pentode power amplifier. And you see here they have built in a resistor, which is the cathode resistor and a bypass capacitor. Um, this resistor um, gives an, um, a negative um, bias for the grid of the pentode which um, which ensures um, uh, the operation here that we don't have um, crossover distortion whereas this capacitor um, is there built inside to um, to bypass the the signal so the AC voltages that comes across here so that we don't lose voltage and no voltage drop so we lose power in short words, a little bit explain what that is. But there we have a mechanism and a reason in a different uh, sound um, to a preamp distortion. Preamp distortion, like uh, usually with these um, valve preamps here, they don't have this um, phenomena of um, crossover distortion. That is only in power amplifier to find. Okay, um, you can <coughs> see here also there's a sine wave. You see this little gap here. And the thing is that this is also um, frequency dependent because you have a resistor and a capacitor and uh, that gives a, 
um, um, filter function. So the lower the frequency is, um, the less uh, efficient is this capacitor. It depends on the capacitance for sure. But sometimes uh, these capacitance lose their capacitance. These capacitors lose capacitance within the years because aluminium um, capacitors lose their capacity more and more and more. So you have the phenomena that older Vox AC30s have um, <coughs> less bypass function here. That means a different behavior. And I'll show you what that means. Okay, so let's switch over to my environment here. We have again the Sigma Studio um, software, which enables us to program this DSP platform, Sigma DSP, ADAU1452. And um, Sigma Studio gives us the tools to uh, <coughs> program this device. Again, we have the multi-stage um, topology here, which contains three um, stages here. We have the preamp stage, built of a high pass again, and um, um, a soft clipping device, again, um, high pass, again, soft clipping device, a high pass, I'll come to this later, again, and a soft clipping device. Um, <clears throat> Let me show you how a signal um, can be seen here on the oscilloscope. And um, I switch this on. And you can see there's the sine wave, and we see the spectrum here. Okay, we have... Um, this is the the device, which is a... Is a sorry, I did it off. This is the device um, which makes a crossover distortion. It simulates it. It's a bit complicated. I come to this maybe at a later stage and um, explain how that works. But it works. And uh, we just want to look how that sounds. Okay, again, I switch on the sine wave. And I increase um, the level a little bit and to see and to show you how the distortion comes. Okay, I leave the speaker simulator off, so that is linear. See this nearly perfect square wave. Okay, right, and then <coughs> we do the crossover distortion, which simulates the push-pull behavior with um, with this gap um, here, I show you here. Okay, it's not there at the moment, but when you increase the level, you see the little gaps here, right? And this is the typical case when a real valve power amplifier gets overdriven, and um, we can adjust with this potentiometer the amount of crossover distortion. You see the spectrum changes, no crossover distortion, and we have this. Now this is compression, and I'll show you how that sounds. Okay, we put this speaker simulation again on because it's nicer for the ears. And um, I show you um, a, lo a lower level here. Okay. We have little distortion, and doesn't matter what I do here with the crossover distortion, it doesn't sh change anything. The gain is the same. A bit more, still the same. Now I put all in. And now, listen to this. There is the compression. Okay, this is without any crossover distortion. And now I put it on just a bit. 
can you hear it compresses without and now with without and with so Even though the gain is the same and this, the square wave reaches the same peaks, it sounds suppressed or compressed when we have a crossover distortion. There's less inherent distortion in there, it's more clean and it's compressed. This is a typical behavior of a panto power amp. This is a typical sound of a preamp distortion or a pedal distortion. And this is the typical sound of a panto smoother distortion. Off. And on. So, if we have a little bit of crossover distortion, I'll show you again the, the signal, how it looks like. You see, there's not much. I, I think it was here. Just a little bit. Now I make it extreme. Like this. And we're gonna listen to this with guitar. And then you see a negative effect. Can you hear it? Very fuzzy. So this is where um, when you go to a amplifier service station, they would say, okay, your amplifier is very bad, biased. There's something wrong. That's too, too bad. Okay, we reduce this a bit more. So we then a little bit of of um, crossover distortion sounds nice. Okay, no, sounds too uncompressed and this is more realistic with this we go to, to um, speaker simulation again on nicer without and with Out. And now with okay and now listen to the higher notes distortion of a pedal and now you see the the, the the sustain doesn't change but there's a compression when you go to the go to the higher amplitudes and 
This is typical for Pento. You see the spectrum? This, I'll just make it with the tone, it's easier. I go down to her 80 hertz, which is the E string. Much more harmonics in there when I in the and it's without speaker um, simulation. Okay. Okay. This you see without crossover distortion, lots of harmonics, very fuzzy, and with a crossover distortion, the tone gets cleaner, not so distorted, but. We get still the limiting effect because it is limited. You see that the sine wave is is is, is clipped, but it doesn't sound so distorted. You you understand? Very distorted and sounds less distorted, even though it's hard limited, and that is the difference. Okay, speed simulation on. Too fuzzy, and the fuzzy sound of preamp or pedal distortion is is like tube screamer or whatever overdriver is is um, typical, and this is the power amp distortion. That's it. Hope you got it. Thank you for watching. See you later.